crucial stage in the season now. What are the key things that you need from your squad on a permanent basis? Well, first of all, that we maintain the togetherness that we have amongst the group, that everybody feels important and valued, and then obviously raise the level individually because that's going to make uh, each position um, improve in every position, basically. And when that happens, we will have good performances, and, and the better we play, the better result we're going to have. And the energy, the team spirit seems high. How have you managed to maintain that, obviously, within the current climate and obviously with the, the games coming thick and fast? Well, trying to keep everybody engaged, everybody feeling important and, um, and that they are going to be key uh, for our success in the last uh, few months. The contribution that you can have, whether you play a minute, whether you are on the bench or whether you start a game, um, for me is equally important because uh, in the last few months when fatigue comes in, substitutions are key, rotations are key. And when you have the opportunity, you cannot demand, no, I need four or five games now to perform. You have to do it immediately and you have to maximize the minute that you get on that pitch. And Burnley, uh, you've got against in the next fixture. They beat you in one nil in the return fixture. But what can we expect from this game on Saturday? Well, a really tough, uh, tough match. I think it's remarkable. Um, what the club, what Sean and the coaching staff have done in, in recent years with the resources that um, they have and uh, the style of play that they have implemented and how well they execute it, how efficient they are. It's always really tough to play against them. At home it was um, a tricky game because we play with 10 men as well and they were not losing on a set piece which is a big part of, of the game. So hopefully we can get a very different result. And you're 10th in the table, so there's eight points between you and the top four. Is that the aim for this season? Well, the aim is to go on and beat Burnley. We've been chasing that um, for a while. It's not in our hands. The only thing we can control is our own results and performances. And we are uh, fully determined to do that um, better than what we've done in, in the last eight months. And last one from me. Is there any in injury updates, including Emil uh, Rosemith as well? Well, uh, Mil had a scan yesterday, it doesn't look a significant injury, but uh, he was in discomfort um, and for the rest, hopefully everybody should be okay. Thank you very much, Mikael. Even at the start of the season or, or that sort of tricky patch that you had when, when results weren't necessarily great, you were always adamant that the performances were pretty good, so you, so you were fairly content. Are we starting to see that now, that we're getting the performances as well as the results? Yes, we have seen that uh, more consistently yeah, since since, um, since the Boxing Day. Um, even though we've lost some games that probably we should not lose, but uh, it's part of football. But um, I think the way the team is playing, obviously, there are a lot of improvements. But um, again, there are so many things that uh, have to still get better because even at Leicester having total control of the game, we gave them two big chances: one the one they scored and the one that went. Almost we gave the ball to Vardy to score. And when you make it 2 0 in this league, you make it so hard for yourself. And after it's true, the team had a great reaction. We played well, and I think we deserve to, to win the game. But um, there are so many things still to, to get better at. It seems at the moment you've got so much attacking talent in particular at your disposal, and you're having to leave players on the bench some weeks that clearly, you know, they're ambitious, talented players. They won't be happy being on the bench. That's a different side to management, isn't it? Having to keep all those players happy. Is that still part of your management that is developing? Yeah, that is key, obviously. Um, you need the large squad when you play a lot of competitions, when you play in Europe, um, and you need quality players. Some of them that we already have, some of them that we are developing, and then those players need competition. Um, but at the same time, they need opportunities, but they have to deserve those opportunities. And I think we've seen in recent months as well, a lot of individuals increasing their levels of performances and um, it's exactly what we want. I think that's the problems as managers that, uh, that we want. I know Rebecca has just asked you about the top four and you say your, your target's just to, to win against Burnley on Saturday, but there must be some talk about it amongst the players that you know, you're know you on a good run at the moment. Nobody exactly is, is grabbing the top four. You know, It, it is up for grabs. Um, there must be some talk amongst the players that you can do it. Of course there is, because that's the aim, and that's what we want to take the club back, which it hasn't been in the last uh, two seasons, and our eye is always there. But um, it's true that it doesn't depend on us, and when that happens, um, 
uh, we have to rely on other people and that's never good. So we've got enough relying on ourselves and doing what we have to do first and then I'm sure we we'll do what we have to do. We'll be in a much better position to then see where we are at in the last four or five years. Just one final question from me. Obviously, it's silly season and everyone's talking about what clubs might do in the summer. Um, not expecting you to give me any names, obviously, but are you expecting to have quite a bit of turnaround in the summer, a bit of a clear out and a few new players coming in? Well, we will see, obviously. We are planning what is going to happen in the summer. It will depend as well where we finish, how we finish. Um, in some cases, um, I think what we have to do in December is unprecedented of this stature to do the amount of transactions that we have to make and it tells you as well um, where we are but I think it was very much needed and uh, and you want to improve you want to do that it's whether with the things that you have in the house and you believe that you can improve or if not externally acquiring players and um, to go to the next level so everything is planned and uh, let's see as well what the market can bring and, and what the last few months can bring as well to the club Thank you, Mikael. Um, I just want to ask about, not the top four necessarily, but, but Europe. I remember when Arsenal Meng was at the club and, and year in, year out, he would finish in the top four. Some people take the mickey out of him because he hinted that being in the top four was like winning a trophy. And if you don't win the Europa League this season, oh, there's a real possibility Arsenal could not be in Europe being competition at all next season. Yeah, at the moment it is not a possibility, at the moment it is our reality and um, and we have to be judged on that and I think it's a fair judgment as well when people want to do it. But the, the option to be in Europe is still available through two different um, paths and we have to maximize that as much as possible because um, the club's history is related to not just the uh, Europa League in recent years but to the Champions League and obviously anything that is not at that level is fulfill of disappointment. I mean, we're all hoping the fans will be back and, and hopefully full stadiums the next season. It's, and it's important, isn't it, that Arsenal get into European competition because obviously financially it's important. It's important for the, for the fans as well. And it's important for the club not to fall perhaps even further behind than they have done. And it's important because we want to experience this game playing with fans. It is the, the whole purpose of it. And me personally, having you know, the, the joy and, and how lucky I feel to, to be the manager of this football club. I want to feel the fans in our stadium. I have to have that feeling that the chemistry that we can create with them and, and play for them and, and the team transmit to the fans and the fans transmit to, to our team the passion that they have for this club. And uh, at the moment, that piece is missing. Um, I'm missing it personally a lot and I'm sure that the players are doing the same. So hopefully, everything will be back to normal next season if everything goes in the right direction and obviously as you mentioned financially obviously it's going to be a, a huge cost as well. Your, your captain uh, at Leicester was um, Alexander Lacazette and he'd been in a good display uh, but it looks like he's going to be leaving in the summer. He's got, uh, he's got a contract with us, he played really well uh, the other week, um, it's exactly what we demand him to do, I am really happy with him and the discussions about his contract um, would happen soon, and um, we will see what happens. So you're, you're hoping like Aubameyang is definitely going to stay then? Well, I'm hoping that the players that have with contract are going to continue with us, and um, and after every case is going to be different, and we will assess that, and we'll make decisions in relation to that. My final question, um, obviously your, your great friend Pep Guardiola, your old club Manchester City, uh, Coming in on a world record of, of winning 25 uh, matches in a row, up to 21 now. It's a rather mysterious question, so forgive me. What will be the greater achievement this season? If, if City break that record and get more than 100 points again, or Arsenal's invincible season? I don't think we, are, we, need, we need to compare. I think what City is doing and the prep is phenomenal, not this season, but uh, the season that they've been together. To sustain that level of perfection, to sustain that hunger um, and the level of the way that they play football is a, is a joy to watch. And we all have to be grateful that in this country we have the, the joy to experience something like that. Because it's not about the way they play, it's the character that that team shows, the spirit that it shows, 
the hunger and not with, with the ball. I think the best example is these players with the ability that they have, how they chase the ball when they lose it. I think that's remarkable. And Pep is done that at every club. And um, I think it's a joy to work at same time. Brilliant. Thanks, Mika. I'll be back at Burnley. Experience as a, as a player and as a manager now, do you think this Man City team is possibly the Premier League's best ever? Because you've been in the Premier League a long time and there's not a team like this at the moment, is there? No, with the maturity that they've showed and obviously the way the team has evolved in, in recent years, um, I would say in this moment, it's the best. But obviously, to probably say it's the best ever, now they have to win everything like... Um, that team did a few years ago when, when they go the four domestic competitions. If you add to that the Champions League, then I think there is no no question because nobody's done it. Um, why why does everyone hate playing Burnley? What what is it about?